Hi guys, this is Jason. Welcome to Rap 4. We're going to go over a little bit of the details of the 468, how it operates, and uh, specifically relating to the lock bolt. Um, the lock bolt is our new anti-chop mechanism. We started putting it in some of our later Model T68s and it's now standard on our 468 platform. What it is, is this is your mag adapter that is the lock bolt. Inside of it, there's a silver bar right here. That bar acts as a, as a stopping mechanism on the bolt when it does not load around. So if you put your magazine in and the round half loads, it will, it won't, uh, the lock bolt will not be moved, pushed up, which will not allow the bolt to push through, preventing a chop. Um, as part of that system, what's going to happen is if your mag is empty, such as this one, when it's in your gun, your gun is active, when you pull the trigger, your bolt is not going to activate, it's not going to cycle forward. What you'll do is you'll hear a little click sound, and that means it's not active. So what you're going to need to do is if that happens, you're going to need to drop your mag, clear your breech, put your new mag in, and you'll be ready to go. All right guys, the second area that we've received a lot of questions about is the charging handle on the 468. Now the charging handle on the 468 uh, for this first generation of them uses the same system as the T68 did. It is two springs that retract the charging handle when you release it. With the 468, if you close it up and forget to put your bolt back in and then pull it back and charge it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna overextend and stretch out your springs, making them useless and therefore your gun will not fire properly. Whenever you're using it, make sure you put your bolt back in. And back into your marker before you go ahead and charge it. The 468 will break down using three different body pins. The first is your back pin. That will allow your marker to pivot open. This gives you full access to the lower receiver. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is when you open it up, one, on your bolt, Sometimes this, will, this piece will be on your bolt, sometimes it will be on the hammer itself of your marker. It is the little uh, connecting rod between the hammer and the bolt. You want to make sure you don't lose that. There's also an o-ring that seals the bodies together where the air flows through. You want to make sure that o-ring stays there and you don't lose track of that one. Second pin you want to do is push this magwell pin out. Go ahead and leave that shut like so. Give the magwell pin a good pull. You open it back up, your magwell will simply slide off like so. If you'd like to take off your magwell, say you're switching over to a D magwell, what you need to do is just go ahead and push it through. If you need a little extra leverage, just take a pen, tap it a little bit, it'll loosen it up, that should pull it right out. Now your marker will assemble, uh, disassemble into three different pieces. You got your lower receiver, your magazine well, and your upper receiver. Now that we have your lower receiver separated from the upper receiver, I'll show you how to gain access to your hammer. Uh, to do that, all you guys simply have to do is remove your uh, airline system, such as the SOCOM stock or your solid remote line adapter or air tank and stock system. Simply take it off. Once you have it removed, you'll be able to get, have access to your uh, guide pin housing and velocity adjuster. So what you'll do is you'll simply push it in, turn it, and release it and it'll come out. Make sure you keep a little bit of pressure on it or you might have it spring out and you're gonna have to go chase it around on the floor. Um, when you pull it out, you'll see your velocity adjuster is right there. It's built into this, this uh, housing. You'll, your spring and hammer dampener will come out and then your hammer. Now that we've disassembled your marker, I'm gonna show you how to reassemble it really quick. First thing you wanna do is put your hammer back into your marker What'll do is you'll push it in there, you'll apply pressure behind it, click your trigger, that'll allow it to slide into the sear. Hit it a second time, it'll allow it to slide a little bit further in. Next thing you'll do is take your bolt carrier, that little pin that goes between your hammer and your bolt, go ahead and put it right in your hammer, apply pressure one more time, and it'll slide your bolt forward. After that, you're gonna insert your spring, like so. Next part you wanna put in there is your hammer dampener and follow it up by your velocity adjuster and guide pin housing. All right guys, now that we got the lower receiver back together, we're gonna to put back together the rest of your marker. First step is taking your upper receiver and your mag well and putting those back together. Just need to push your pin back through, like so. 
and you're ready to go on that end. Flip it back open. You'll slide your marker, but using these grooves, right into your magwell, into the slots for it, like that. Push your pin through, like so. And you're done with that with step two. Now your lower receiver is connected to your magwell and upper receiver. Next step is adding your bolt in. Simply slide it down like so. When you have your hammer locked into the back position like I did when I first put it back together, it'll be really easy to get your marker set up. You close it, give your charging handle a good pull, locks it back into place, close it up, and you're ready to go. You'll know your marker is ready when you pull the trigger and you hear the clicking sound of your lock bolt activating.